Well, welcome. My podcast is now called Off Limits, Dave. Are we off limits right now? Yeah, with everything I talk about is off limits. It's off limits. Yeah, it are, we gonna so, be, are we going to be on the internet? It, yes. <laughs> it sounds so catchy. Yeah. The internet nowadays is pretty much like primetime TV was back in the day in terms of what you can and can't say, I feel like. It's getting smaller and smaller and narrower and narrower. Yeah. We could be taken out by the time I finish this sentence right now. Well, yeah, you were you were an alarmist. And I, well, I would have called you an alarmist <laughs> back then. And now yeah. I'm like, oh, what Dave was saying is coming true. Isn't that funny? Like, I would have never thought if you would have told me 20 years ago that I would have been one of the guys 10 years ago that was warning about all of this stuff. And now, clearly, like, I'm not just saying this was me. It was, yeah. it was a bunch of us. Yeah. And you were included in that, too, to some extent. Like, there were a bunch of people just like, this left craziness, it's real. Everyone well, kept it's ideology. Me, it's, 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 it's religious, you know? It, well, religion at least has some sort of redemption arc. That's Usually true. it's cult-like, actually, yeah. I would say. Yeah, it's more yeah, cult-like yeah. than religious. But, like, everything that we all warned against was true. And the irony is, of course, we were being called Nazis the entire time, and now they've unmasked themselves as <laughs> Nazis. Like, if the Nazis came back, what would they be doing right now? Well, I didn't the think I'd be... Happening. I did not think I'd live in a time, and I'm 56... Give the audience a second, because they are yeah, the like, no, guy, they're like no, no, they're like no way. Look yeah. at his face. Hold on, yeah. No, no. Anyway, you look this brought to you by supplements. <laughs> uh, but um, I didn't think I'd see a time, and I'm being serious, where I where a, a a university in the in the West Village, well, the East Village of New York, Cooper Union, yeah, which is which is a school that gave scholarships to um, artists. My my. Patty Jenkins, who's a director, she directed yeah. Wonder Woman. She oh, yeah. went there on a scholarship, on a painting scholarship. But it's an art school. And you have Jewish kids that had to lock themselves up in a library because pro-Hamas demonstrators. Yeah. And let's make a distinction between... I'm glad you said pro-Hamas. Yeah. Because they are pro-Hamas. Yeah. And people are afraid to say that. Yeah. yeah. Again, and we're going to get into that, but they were afraid for their safety. That's, that's crazy. And so now it's become... What I think is very interesting is that you want to talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, we can have that conversation. You want to talk about uh, Gaza being an open-air prison versus being whatever it is, we can have that conversation. We can talk about all that stuff. We can talk. I was in, I was in the West Bank. I saw how the Palestinians were living there. I, I, I spoke to Israelis. I watched how Muslims and Jews work together in Israel. Blah, blah, blah. We can have all those conversations. Yeah. It's a... And well, I stay, we can have yeah. those conversations. Well, I stay yeah. out of it for the most part yeah. in the past because it's such an emotionally charged thing. And what I say is not going to change anybody's mind. What I'm shocked by is this, the fact that all of us didn't, all of us collectively didn't stop and say, this, you cannot come into houses and kill entire families in their pajamas. You cannot burn children alive you can't do these things without even getting into context we, we have to have a conversation about certain things will not stand it is no different than having a serial killer that you catch and it's like you killed all these people and the serial killer says yes but i was i was treated i was abused horribly by my mom that may be so right but you you did all this stuff and you got to go. Well, I can't say that nobody was warning about it because some people were. Do you know yeah. J uh, James Lindsay? Have you ever had him on the show I've or not, talked to him? I've James not. Lindsay's a great, uh, he's been warning about what wokeness was going to do and how it was combined, how it was really just ushering in Marxism, all the stuff that we all kind of know right now, even if you don't know all the definitions and all the history and yeah. everything. But if you think about it, what was uh, going let me just Let yeah. me just count that. Sure. It's not just Marxism. Wokeness is actually doing something else. It is ushering in destruction it oh, wants yeah. to destroy what we have it wants to destroy the institutions and the things that have made this country with all its problems the beacon of the world where everybody wants to come to yeah well the, to the, get the, to get to the marxist utopia you'd have to take out all you. of the goodness here so there's exactly. been a there's been a 40-year march through the institutions that that leads it to a place where when I've seen what's going on on the college campuses for last week, I honestly haven't been that surprised. Like it's, it's yeah, you, somewhat, you, it's shocking in a certain sense, right? You don't expect an 18 year old to be waving around a Palestinian flag screaming from the river to the sea, which is a call for genocide, right? They're not going to get up there. They're not stupid enough. And the people who are pulling their strings are not stupid enough to be like, kill all the Jews right now. Mm -hmm. It would be too obvious. So right. they just chant things that are coded ways yeah. of doing that. 
so I guess there's a little bit of shock with that, but the, but the end game of all of this was obviously that you'd have to kill people. I mean, remember on, on October 7th when this was all unraveling or, or being exposed and, and coming out on Twitter, just these unbelievably horrific images, there was a series of people on Twitter that were tweeting, well, what did you think we meant when we were gonna end occupation and all of these things? And by the way, there is no occupation and I'm, I'd be happy to discuss all the history of the land if you want. Um, but so to some extent, it's not surprising because they have, they have run on a, uh, I would say a platform, a 40 year platform of you are evil, we are good, mm -hmm. we're gonna undo everything mm -hmm. and we're gonna lead to this utopia that of course is gonna be a horrific dystopia and you're, you're yeah. seeing it right now. Yeah, I, I swear to God, sometimes I think if the devil has a video game, that's, that's that area of the world is his video it's, game. You know, it's just, uh, I, I just sometimes, I almost get biblical about this. I'm actually reading the Old Testament. Well, you, you do know the history of the place. I do, and I'm- a I'm, connection I, to that I, Bible yes, thing, yes. You know? It's a but little I, preachy, but- but, but I also lived in the Arab world for eight years of my yeah. life. And so I grew up around Palestinians. I was in uh, Lebanon and stuff. And, and my experience with, with Arabic people is very positive. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going through the Old Testament for a second time, third time really, but with, uh, with a priest who breaks down every chapter. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's, it's laborious, but it's really interesting. Huh. This is nothing new to that part of the world. Yeah. And sometimes I wonder if this is going to be uh, th this is where we are working out the the idea of can you shoot and bomb your way out of a problem mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know, people, I went to Israel and the, the joke that I had, but it wasn't a joke, is people get along great as long as you got walls, barbed wire, and plenty of guns. <laughs> right. You know, um, but but I, I think the larger question also becomes, it's, it's very inconvenient. You do have to have a conversation about whether or not your culture your religion your um your way of life your belief structure is part of your problem it might be part of your How do you it, mean? well in other words i i've always said in the first intifada with the palestinians when they were throwing rocks at tanks mm -hmm. they got a lot of traction positive traction yeah. not just from the world but from jews themselves mm -hmm. in america and Jews living in Israel. Well, lefty Jews generally yes. have a type of Stockholm yes, syndrome. Yes, but part of the, but, but part the, of the Jewish, yeah. Yeah. But, but also part of the Jewish character yeah. is democracy, is the idea that you have a right as an individual to speak your mind regardless of who you are. Mm -hmm. I can make that argument too. Sure. And, if the, and, and the, the Palestinians would have done themselves so much good if they had taken Gandhi well, it really came from Thoreau's idea no, of, of course, passive resistance. Sit, do sit-ins. Right. Put flowers in the guns of the IDF. I promise you, I fucking promise you, every kid in Israel would have been like, Dad, of you're being course. a bigot. And you would, have had, you would have had Israeli lawyers come to their defense. But the second intifada, when people started blowing themselves to smithereens, yeah. and Ariel Sharon, I never forgot, I think it was Barbara uh, uh, Feinstein mm -hmm. uh, uh, said, I think it was her. She said, what is Ariel Sharon supposed to do? Write a letter to the editor? Mm -hmm. And it was when they started blowing themselves up that they yeah. built these walls. And I think the inconvenient question is, when, as long as there is this romance about armed resistance yeah. in the Palestinian heart and mind, yeah. uh, it will never get better. Well, so it's interesting because I think you made a good point of how it, these are Hamas rallies right now, but there's obviously a difference between the average person on the street and the leaders of Hamas. Now, they may be indoctrinating a huge amount of the kids and all of that stuff. I, I don't know that we have fully quantifiable numbers on who believes exactly what in Gaza and all of those things. But the truth is the Palestinians have been offered a state at least six times since 1948. The second, you know, it's funny, all these people are suddenly screaming about the, the 75 year occupation and we should end the 75 year occupation. You know what was happening there 75 years ago before that? It was the British Empire. So yeah. there, there was never a state of Palestine. Palestine was the place where Jews lived and Arabs lived and the Arab, actually the other Arab countries, look at New York Times headlines from the 30s. They used to boycott Palestine because that's where the Jews lived. Yeah. The Palestinian national soccer team founded by a, a Jew and it was all Jews that played on the team. The Palestine Post is now the Jerusalem Post. All of that being said, if they would have ever just said from the partition plan in 1947 to Ehud uh, Barak offering 97% of the West Bank and all of that, 
they could have had a sane, not only a sane, they could have had the most flourishing Arab state in the entire world because Gaza, especially even more than the West Bank, it's the same beach mm-hmm. on the Mediterranean know, as Tel Aviv. You know, you're, you know you're speaking you know? logically here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so I know thing, that doesn't really fly. The one but, thing you, you know. can't bring to Israel yeah. and Palestine is logic. Yeah. It's emotional. It's, it's well, religious. You, well, it's, 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 uh, it's, it, it really is a religious battle here. Right. Isn't it? Well, uh, yes, but it's not, it's not equally as irrational in that the Israelis... It's a country that's a democracy, mostly founded on Western values with, you know, very ancient traditions, let's say, and an ancient history. They've had left-wing governments. They've had right-wing governments. And please understand and that I think 20% of the Knesset, and you can look this is up. Is Arab. Is they Arabic. Have, yeah, they have, yeah, they have Arab Muslims. And, and the, the, the irony yeah. is the Knesset's also rented on land that is owned by the Greek Orthodox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's incredible. We were, we were just That's there. what's so, so crazy. I took my whole team there in, in uh, about six months ago, and we did about 10 days there. And, you know, the, it's really sad now in retrospect because the main takeaway, my main takeaway, and I've been there probably eight times in my life, was how peaceful it was. Yeah. It was so peaceful. And if you went to Jerusalem, where we spent five straight days in Jerusalem to start, the amount of ultra-Orthodox Jewish men in, in all the garb, walking next to women in burqas, and little Jewish kids playing on the street with Arab neighbors, it was all, it's the only place in the Middle East with any of that. There's, right. no, there's literally no other right. place in the Middle East right. where a bunch of Jews well, are wandering great, the around. Great ir- there's no yeah. Christians left in yeah. Egypt, you know? The great irony is Christians were the ones who killed Jews throughout history. It was the Christians that were the Jew, Jews' biggest, uh, it was, in fact, the, Jew, the Jews always went to Muslim countries because they were given safe quarter there right. because they were, quote unquote, Yeah, to pay people, a tax, people it wasn't always world. so great. Well, but, the Muslims yeah. had their way of doing things, but, yeah. but even the Ottomans and things like that had these these Jewish sort of quarters where right. you could, um, as long as you paid a tax and there were all these things that, that went on. But um, that that's kind of what the irony of all of this is. But again, when you start speaking rationally, right. my thing is more more the how successful Hamas and Iran have been because the more we start looking into this, the more we see that Iran had its... Yeah its handprint on this. And the Iranian foreign minister is in the United States right now talking at the UN today, basically saying if the US doesn't stop Israel soon, it's coming to your land. I mean, he well, literally based, said that. Well, the Israel's trying to avoid New York a today. multi-front war. Yeah. One in Syria, especially in the, uh, I think the south of Lebanon, with, which is yeah. controlled by Hezbollah. There's, there's they have rockets. rockets yeah, sitting they there got, waiting and to and go. And those yeah. rockets are sophisticated. Yeah, we and then you're going to have an exchange and that's where Iran might be brought into the war. Yeah. So it, I, I don't envy anybody in this in this thing but my, my biggest thing is always please stop drawing a moral equivalency you can't do that we have to stop everything and say Hamas you did the unthinkable you committed the worst atrocities you have to pay for that you don't get away with that no one should get away with that and and you know Douglas Murray had something that I thought was yeah, really no, he's, really he's just I love best. that dude he's just the best. I, I, I don't know him but yeah. I oh I know him well I'll introduce I love you guys him, he's please. just great yeah I'm such a fan yeah he's he's just so clear about things and they were talking about proportionality yeah oh and, yeah and we played what it a, oh it's gonna oh, be tough finding about you want to talk you want to talk proportionality so we'll just have to come in and rape and kill we just went through what what Hamas had done yeah and we know this everybody we know this because they wore body cams yeah because the, the the Nazis had the temerity to they documented what they were doing, but they hid it from the world. They wanted it for their own records. Hamas did the the reverse here. That's the thing. Yeah, um, but but the sad truth is that even if you were to say that these societies will never live in peace and whatever, they have had many chances. Like think about it: when the Israelis left in two thousand and five, there was no blockade. They literally they left greenhouses, infrastructure, temples, all, they took every Jew out. There were only 8,000 Jews. No, there were 24,000. 24,000? They extracted yeah, them go, by force. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, a lot of, that's my, a lot of people. I'm not sure why I thought it was 8,000, but okay, but 24,000. They took lot. their own citizens out. They left them with infrastructure. Look that up. There were, there, were, there were rich American Jews that put millions of dollars into Gaza to say, go build your society. And then instead, what did they do? They started launching rockets. That was then six months later when uh, Egypt and Israel decided to have a blockade. The irony here, and of they course, also, they, they, and you're right. And then when you when you vote in an organization, you know, when people talk about Hamas, Hamas is not some unified group either. Hamas has a political wing and a military yeah. wing, and within that military wing, there are splinter groups. Yeah. So different areas of Hamas are controlled by various militias. How many? 
Wow, there, there you 9, go. 000. Yeah. I thought it, there were 24,000. But you... 9,000. All right, stop, stop <laughs> saying Dave's right. Does that count <laughs> their kids, time. you who son is, of a who bitch? Is right again? Is that 9,000 <laughs> families? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, God, Dave, but, you're but so accurate. You, but the point is, when you watch... It's a lot of people. When, if you go back to that time, and you know what's interesting about that, Netanyahu, who was... It was Ariel Sharon who was the prime minister at the time. Netanyahu, I think, was defense minister or maybe foreign I think he was minister, minister of finance, I think. Minister, oh, that yeah. you're probably right. Yeah, he was prime minister before that. Whatever, but he was against the withdrawal because he said this is exactly what's going to happen. Now, the sad thing about Netanyahu is he he has presided over their their incredible you know forty year run now He's economically been, too. Economically he, he was one of the guys who really ushered in that free market entrepreneurial spirit because yeah. Israel was founded by leftists by by, by socialists. socialists. Yeah, yeah. well, the because kibbutz socialism team, can work at yes. the tiniest on a, you, on a kibbutz on a tiny super tiny scale when yes. you're all of the same ethnicity and everything else and there's a familial bonds. Of course, socialism can work that way. Yeah. In the t but by the way, then after about one generation of it, they started realizing, and hey, I'd like a little more land. It also I'd, didn't work. It also it they stops. also needed they needed aid. And, right, yeah. and he fully and he fully understood that. Yeah. But the irony is, you know, he was against the Gaza withdrawal, which I think now in retrospect, it's not that they needed to keep the 8,000 people there, but maybe they needed more of a military mm -hmm. presence there. The, the sad ending for him, who's been such an incredible statesman and spokesman for his people, is that he, he, he when this is, when the military portion of this is done, done. the scar of it is never yeah. done, he's going to have to step down. And I think he will do it honorably, actually. I think, I think he loves the country and the people so much that as much as he's, there, he has no way out of this. It, it, this happened it's, on his watch. This is job. the worst, it's the worst tragedy since the Holocaust. It's on his watch. and Well, uh, I think also Israel's liability also was the fact that if you're, you're a student, if you're a Shiva student, if you study Judaism, you are allowed to, uh, you don't have to join the military. You, you, don't, the you don't have to work. Yeah. Yeah. And your whole family lives on the dole. And by the way, you can vote. And they create some powerful voting blocks, which yeah. he aligned himself with. And in some cases, some of these people are, are, are fundamentalist biblical fundamentalists and i think and they're also it's not even that they follow one talmudic scholar and they do whatever that person says so they vote as this sort of unified force yeah his and his coalition that, was that's, definitely that's not a what very he that's a liability i yeah. think most israelis are like these guys are out of their minds they're not even from here and they're yeah. just so but the difference is at this point the country is extremely united like I, we were it, it is but before that they were gonna no, they were on a low on a low grade verbal civil war no we were you know they were having this huge uh debate about the the judicial uh yeah. review and all of this stuff and we went there in the midst of it but what was interesting about their protests there so the lefties there when they're protesting and there were hundreds of thousands of them in in tel aviv they were still chanting and, and singing the national anthem of yeah. Israel. Now think how fundamentally different that is. So they, have, they didn't want the judicial reform, or they wanted, they did not want the judicial reform to go through, but Netanyahu and the people on the right did. But there was a love of country on both sides. And that's very fundamentally different than when we see BLM and Antifa and everything rampaging through our streets. Yeah. And, that's, and by the way, how crazy, how crazy, like that, they could flip BLM into a Hamas organization like that. That, that tells you it was all planned. It was all planned. Do you planned. think the left has finally gone too far with their backing of, well, of course. Hamas? Well, they've already they've mean, gone way. I mean, they've already gone Karen, too far. Come on, they, I mean, a, yeah, they're, they're the definition of chaos. No, this is the end game, right? This is the end game where they would fully unmask themselves as people who would be for genocide. And by the way, as I keep saying on my show, you don't have to. I I'm Jewish. I care about the state of Israel. Um, you, as an American, you don't necessarily, I think there's uh, many reasons you should, because the ideas, as Ben Shapiro often talks about, the ideas between Jerusalem and Athens are the ideas that came up with this great, great country and all, right. all of those things, and, right. and that our founders were believers, and okay, fine. But even if you don't think any of that is legit, the reason you have to care is because, let's say, somehow the, the most unimaginable thing happens and they, they take down Israel. They kill the 8 million Jews that are there. By the way, they'd have to kill about 3 million Arabs who are there living happily and all of that stuff. Yeah. But let's say they do it. Do you think that the people in London who are now chanting for the caliphate and the people in Paris and the people who are trying to gas the Jews in, in Sydney, Australia, and you think they're all going to be like, okay, guys, we're good to go? No. Who, it's so ironic, too, because who is more indigenous, the Jews to the ancient land of Israel? Or, or the ones in New York? <laughs> or, or, yeah, or, or these guys in London who are screaming for the caliphate. I mean, so that really is, to me, 
like you don't have to care about the Jews specifically. Right. But if you live in a Western nation and you think your Western ideals and your diversity and tolerance or any of those things are important, wait till you see what comes after this. But you know, and when you even say that you have some pride in your culture and your country and the traditions. So if I were to say I'm a traditionalist, that would be I'd get I'd get kicked okay, you, off. You married a, a chick, you have kids. I'm a you're traditionalist. Very, you're very I mean, traditional, you know, <laughs> but I'm also I'm also yeah. like like we talk about being yeah. an old school liberal in yeah. terms of I believe in individual liberty. Sure. Um, but but at the same time, that would be that's already such a dirty word, right? Mm. And um, I think that my my hope though is that the left see the 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 far left is. In, just being, if you were a part of it, it'd be impossible to follow the rules. The yeah. rules just go in a circle. It just becomes a snake eating its own tail. Yeah. I don't even know what they stand for. And I certainly don't know what they're going to replace. When they tear down a statue of George Washington, I'd like to know what they want to replace it with. Well, Besides an ever-evolving idea of, of some inner feeling. Well, the we left know seems what they to wanted. only honor that. We know what they want to replace yeah. with. I mean, yeah. have you Karl seen Marx? some of this? Well, no, it's, it's worse than that in a way because have you seen some of the statues they've put up in some Democrat cities? No. It's the worst sort of modern contemporary art that means nothing. It, it be, and that's the intentional. The anti-human right. sort of. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like a fist in a cube that is missing a finger. Like, it makes no sense. Ugh. But that's part of it because yeah. they have to also break beauty. A deconstructionist you, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. You, how do you they have broken brains and the part of this yeah. that we haven't it's talked the about architecture yet. remember the architecture from the 50s yeah the, the, the architectural the, crime these germans that would like come in with these fucking like weird like even the buildings these structures that looked so horrific metal and just it just nothing not even a rat would want to live in them you know but it's by design because if you can break if you can disconnect people from beauty and from when you walk around that you see beautiful things you see a city that looks pleasant and looks flourishing. I mean, you know, I'm in, yeah. I'm in Miami now. I was like, when I come back to LA, like it's depressing. The weather yeah. is nice, yeah. but it's depressing. I used to live in West Hollywood when we when we first moved here. It's it's gone. Yeah, it it looks like the beginning of I Am Legend. Just like nothing yeah. is left, right? Yeah. And you can go to other places. You can go to Nashville that's flourishing. You can go to Miami that's flourishing. You go to a lot of Republican places that are flourishing. It's not that Republicans are so right about everything or great. No. But if you have a basic sort of we believe well, in Republican, law and order. Republican we, nowadays just means. It means. It you means believe a man's a man and a woman's same. a woman. Yeah. It, it, I'm called yeah. far right. Boys because have <laughs> I'm called far right because I believe in two genders. Yeah. I mean, th this is where we've gotten. So you, you have, they have pushed all of us over into this this category this yeah. name and and you, you, when when you say something that's so reasonable the way we grew up yeah you know so i don't even know if it's to, to to say you're a democrat now and i i'm famously like in my own mind i'm always so moderate i'm basically switzerland well i can't do that anymore no you can't you, you can see, do I, it in we good, can't do it right you can do it in good times you can sort of take the laid off approach in which means times, i'm not committed right right but you could do, you ever see that great bit by Richard Jenny? Remember Richard Jenny? Yes. And he did that great yeah. bit about Democrats and Republicans. So he like makes fun of both, but then he starts talking about independence and you think he's about to say how great independents are. Right. And then he just rips them a new one. Oh, I because, didn't see that. Because they can't take a position on anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he like, you And that's see me. But, but now but, but I have to. Now, I said to my wife to yesterday, I go, I have to take a position. Yeah. I have to embrace being a conservative because they've pushed me into that category. Yeah. I don't have a choice to be new nuance is dead. Callan, do I you seem know? like the most traditional conservative no. around? Like I'm still begrudgingly pro choice. Put aside married to a dude. Yeah. Th that one they're they're I kind of you. over. But like even even on abortion. And yet that's why what I say on my show a lot is I, I'm I'm a Florida Republican. I really am okay saying that. I very proudly obviously voted for DeSantis and I support every Republican right. in Florida. And Florida has a flourishing state at every level. I'll tell you a great story. So we're doing one day on my show just going through all the homelessness. I was in San Francisco, which as you know is just absolute apocalyptic yeah. nightmare of homelessness a drug city so and it was and I took this video where I walked through the homeless camp and I should have yeah, the tenderloin it, it was bananas yeah. open anyway so we so we go through all these homeless numbers and i said uh you know i don't know how many homeless people there are in miami but i i never see them i never see any homeless people i only see building and 
my phone rang during, I got a text during, as I'm live on air, it was the mayor of Miami, Suarez, watching the show, and he goes, Dave, we have 380 homeless people and I'm working on it. <laughs> and I was like, doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? I love the that. It's like, forget that he was watching my show, but just that he, like, he was culturally aware, right? Like, Fantastic. so I'm doing something that I guess is culturally relevant, but like, he knew the number and I'm working on it. And are, it's like- Are you optimistic? Is, 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 is common sense winning some of the day? Well, I would say the silver lining, and we're not at the silver lining yeah. phase of this thing yet. The silver lining is the people that that are, say, you of eight years ago, maybe me of 10 years ago, a lot of the lefty Jews that we were talking about, they're waking up. I mean, I, I got some more guns last week. The store was jam-packed. It was all oh, yeah. Jews oh, yeah. and people that are, you know, so like people are waking yeah. up to the to the lunacy of the Democrats. That is good. I would say, I always describe myself, I'm a world weary optimist. I could not do what I do for a living if I wasn't an optimist, yeah. right? If you didn't believe- Well, cause you're trying to make a difference. Right, and if you didn't believe you could, like, yeah, that's true. you know, that's I, true. I would have been in the NBA. That's what I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, well, really I've you know? seen you, I've seen you shoot. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, I would say America is on the precipice of it really being over. I would say if we get another four years of Biden or whoever, it's not even Biden, whatever that mm. thing is, right? I think there are some ways to turn around. I think clearly DeSantis is, is really the way to do it. But uh, if that does not happen, I would say I'm very bullish on a few states. I think the states will have to fully embrace federalism at the highest possible level. And the problem with that really is that unfortunately we can't control, Florida can't control everything. Yeah, You know what I mean? You can't control the federal border, but can you control a border with Florida and Georgia to make sure people stay right. out? How do you deal with all the monetary issues? If they keep destroying the value of the dollar, yeah. you can have a strong economy, which we have in Florida. But anyway, that that's sort of like, we would deal with some of those problems when they come. So I'm definitely not, I'm not, opt I don't think anyone's optimistic mm -hmm. right now. It doesn't feel like we can get to optimism right now. But humans go through horrible things. I yeah. mean, we, we went through World War II, and yeah. then you know Japan and Germany became our greatest allies after. But it took a lot of dead people I, to see, do it. I worry a little bit more about. I worry about something else. So, so even when you talk about the past, there seemed to have been at least uh, homogeneity, homogeneity in 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 where the truth was versus where the truth wasn't. There yeah. was there was sort of an understanding that. Um, what you saw on film, what you heard someone say, what you uh, there was a there was a there were institutions and power structures that were delineating certain rules. There was power flowing from certain sources, yeah. and there was truth flowing from different sources. Now it might have been Walter Cronkite, even though it might have been heavily censored. Uh, but we, we, when we read the New York Times, if you are a right-wing, left-wing, Republican, the New York Times was a trusted source of information. The church yeah. was a trusted institution in terms of what it stood for before all the things, you know, all, all the uh, abuse Nobody's came perfect. out. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I think is a new challenge is that we don't know where, no one can agree who is telling the truth or where to get the truth from. Yeah. That's what I think is incredible. Well, so you'll hear a, a conversation on, you know, it'll be on a podcast or, you know, and you'll say, this makes total sense, right? This is, this is drawn. This is, uh, this makes total sense because I grew up with the understanding that there is a certain way to behave uh, and there's a certain way not to behave. And why do I know that? Well, every movie and every book I ever read was <laughs> right. an argument for how to behave in the world, and we all agreed. And at yeah. the end of the day, the hero does the right thing. That seems to be going away. That seems to be, that's where I think the left is so evil, because they, they are literally mocking even those ideas. And again, and I would say again, that's part of it. That mm. that's a uh, it's a feature, not a bug, right? So it's like CNN or the New York Times. Like in the last couple of weeks, the thing with the Gaza hospital. That how is it that I did not get fooled again? I was just like, let me just wait a minute because this seems really odd, right? But they immediately. It's not only that they say that they that CNN and New York New York Times changed their headline three times and. Front page of the Times showed a picture of a different building altogether yes. talking about the hospital. Yes. And so even why, today, I think they ran another article about, oh, now, we don't quite know. Now they, right. We still don't know. 
It wasn't an errant rocket that that burst two miles away. And we did now there's another there was a fire, but we don't know. And by the way, if this was any other place in Israel, nobody would even care. Right. I think that that's all a separate thing altogether. Sort of no Jews, no news. Like any other country in the Middle East could bomb any other country, kill 10,000 people in a day and nobody would yeah. care. Yeah. But putting that aside for a sec, you know, one of the things I say about CNN all the time, because we play their clip, you know, all day long, like when I wake up in the morning and I'm putting the show together and Phoenix is here, he's putting the show together with me. It's like, we could do a, sh I could just do a media, co you could do it too. Like just a, how many times did the media blatantly lie about yeah. everything? Yeah. And I can't, I don't want to do that every single day. So I'm always like, well, I don't need them to be great. I don't need the New York Times to be great, but I need, what we need as a society, and this is what you're talking about. We need them to not be abjectly horrible. Yes. Because then it causes everybody yes. to siphon off into a zillion other things. So there are many people who tune into my show and I always, I'm trying to tell you the truth. I, I have no problem. I like it. When I, when I make a mistake on the show mm -hmm. and, and the next day I have to correct it, I kind of like it because it keeps me honest. It keeps mm, absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we, we, I had a big screw up on something. Like, oh, it was actually involving Douglas Murray. So he was interviewed by a woman on British television. And the way, the, the way it was cut for Twitter made it seem like she was basically arguing for Hamas. And so when I, when I played the clip, I was critical of her. And then people in the comments section, a minute after we posted it, or it was live. Thank God for them. They started saying, Dave, no, 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 you need to see the full clip. She was playing devil's advocate. She has a great track record. Good. I found it. I immediately, she turned out, she followed me on Twitter. I, t I messaged her immediately. I said, hey, you probably haven't heard of this. You haven't heard of this yet. I just want to pre-apologize to you. I'm going to address it at the top of my show tomorrow. I will tweet about it. And I felt good after. I felt like, yes, and, you, and they never do that. They never they do that. They never do that. They Where is Jake Tapper's apology The for reason they don't do that, I think, is because they, they are first and foremost beholden to the echo chamber they're yeah. speaking in. Yeah. And, and the money is in confirming everyone's bias. Uh, but I think that, uh, and, and, but the one thing I will say is it does seem like legacy media continues to lose its, it just continues to lose its potency it's popularity. I mean, CNN, if you look at those shows and you look at those ratings. Oh, like no. They, I mean, I get more live viewers oh, oh, than oh CNN my, gets Oh, my God. Time. And yeah. here's the problem. These companies have shareholders. Yeah. So when, when Fox went through that crazy lawsuit and now they're facing another one, yeah. the shareholders go, you guys better start being very careful about, you know, if you're going to say something, you better believe it. Yeah. If you're texting something behind the scenes, that's a liability. That's costing me money. Yeah. So I think the only thing that speaks, talks is money to these people. Yeah. It well, certainly isn't the truth anymore. Well, that was always my hope with big tech. I was arguing five, six years ago. I think I said this on Tucker's show about six years ago. I never thought YouTube in and of itself, right? You mentioned right before we started, like, because you're doing stuff with Crowder now, like, is YouTube affecting you? Of course. Of course they are. Of course yeah. they are. But my argument was never that we could p apply enough pressure on them that YouTube would be nicer to Dave Rubin, right? right? Like I had ideas that were counter to everything that the whole corporation yeah. is for. But what I did think was possible, and this is exactly what you're talking about, is that they have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to make the most money. So if you found out, or to run the best business, mm -hmm. which ultimately would make the most money. So if you found out for sure they had a corporate policy of demonetizing every voice who was counter to their narrative, the shareholder might be like, wait a minute, wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute. How much money are we leaving on the table because of this? Mm -hmm. I really think that still might be the I one so. course correction here because it's not its not going to be course corrected yeah. out of ideology. Yeah. They've, they've chosen what they're going in on with ideology. Yes. And the, maybe the course correction is is money. Well, you know, one, one of the things that I... I appreciate about being on Crowder and just, I, I thought to myself again, I was like, I, I don't have a choice. I got to tell the truth and I have to align myself with what I believe is yeah. right. And if that means I'm going to, I'm going to pay a price for that, whether that might be in shadow banning or in censorship or whatever, I, it's worth it. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I like part of the show goes on mug club, which is behind a paywall. Yeah. And I, and they, I really enjoy You know, that's it. run by locals, which is my, and, and pretty cool. And huh? I remember that. And pretty you kept cool. telling me to get involved. I think I tried to get, yeah, I about made a, a thousand lot of money. times. That's, uh, and I uh, that's didn't listen, shame. didn't damn listen shame. to Dave Rubin. I'll buy you dinner sometime. I appreciate that with your <laughs> locals' money. Now that you're a mogul, damn it! But one of the great things Callan, is that Callan, the, twenty grand. We'll, we'll turn it around. Right? I promise you. And I'm like, uh, 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 I can't get that. Uh, Fuck! Yeah, you said that to me literally. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm chastened. Can I get a back door? Nothing um, I can do now. Nothing. Right. And I understand. All right. I sold the company. Keep I can't, I can't do for it. <laughs> you know, I got a little. Um, but 
what what I love is that that you know getting these comments, reading comments, yeah. keeps me honest. Yeah, I'm going to start reading all the comments, especially the ones that are critical on the show, because I appreciate it because people really do listen. So what? And they, what do and people they keep you? Well, they what do they get you on? Like well, what's they'll, something they'll be like, that you'll hey, say? Hey, that, dude, yeah. you know, I had a, I had a guest who's a very smart guy, a friend of mine. Very smart guy and very successful. And he he basically had worked for Biden and said, I think Biden's a moderate. Now, Biden traditionally was a moderate. He was a guy traditionally, yeah. if you look at his impossibly long career since he was 29, who took sort of a middle of the road, kind of a blowhard, yeah. not the smartest guy. I don't care what anybody says, no, but was, exactly. uh, was always sort of a, 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 a traditional Democrat. Yeah. But to call him that now, and this was brought to my attention, they were like, and they went through the, the you know, the border and voting rights and, and gender ideology. Men in female prisons. This is not, this is not a moderate. <laughs> right. He was hijacked by insanity. And I don't know what his deal is at that age. Now, now sometimes a president goes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll push that agenda, but he knows it'll never pass. And that's how he plays both sides. Yeah. So he's a consummate politician. But as long as you are not going to stand up for sanity, then... You're not a moderate. Well, look, look what's happening right now. You know, there was this shooting yesterday in Maine, mm -hmm. which could be changed. I, I, they haven't even found the guy as long, right Crazy. from the moment we're taping this, as far yeah. as I know. Um, I think 16 people killed, another 20 shot, something like that. And immediately, Kamala Harris is given a press conference today talking about taking away guns. We could do this more like Australia. And it's like, we're two weeks off of babies being ripped out of wounds. It's unbelievable. I bought an AR-15 for the first time last week, and, I, and I got another handgun. Get a suppressor. Have you ever yeah. shot one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a suppressor. Yeah. They're very yeah. loud. And you uh, need, I did get a suppressor. And get some, get some headphones. Yeah, keep yeah. them close to the AR, because when the zombie apocalypse hits, you The last thing you want to do yeah. is blow out your hearing. Yeah. Keep this elbow in here. If you have this yeah, elbow yeah. out, you're going to get caught in the elbow. Keep it here, all right, Dave? All right, all right. You understand? Come down, we'll to, go come down to Florida. Let's shoot. I'll take you to Terran Tactical. You been there? No. Where's that? Oh, dude. Where's that? That's in Simi Valley. That's okay. my boy. Oh, that's up here. I got to go yeah, shooting up here. I don't know. Newsom uh, well, come that's get where me. John Wick trains oh. and everybody. You go there, it's Holly. It's like the who's who of Hollywood. You can't get there unless Can I you... tell you a great Keanu Reeves story? Yes. A little sidebar for a moment. Yes. So maybe four years ago or so, I'm on a plane from LA to New York, uh, red eye overnight, first class, just the one in the one in one seats. Mm -hmm. And I look to my left and it's Keanu Reeves. Oh. And he's wearing all black. His hair is taller long. than you thought too. Right? It was right when John Wick 3 was on on demand which I was going to watch. And then I look over there and then he's sitting there. So I was like, I can't watch it right now. Now it's going to yeah. get awkward. The guy, I stayed up the entire time kind of just looking at him from the corner of my eye. Never look, he didn't, as far as I could tell, didn't even have a phone, never turned on anything, never asked for anything, never, had, all he did the entire time was crack his knuckles, kept doing this. Really? And I kept thinking, how great would it be if we got hijacked right now? <laughs> like this would be it. This would really, but it, but just stared. And he just looked at you and goes, read. "Stay down." Yeah, exactly. But he didn't read. He just stared into the back of the seat. Really? Cracking his knuckles wow. for like six hours. I wonder if he was thinking about a role. You know, I think. I guess he maybe he was going through something. Could have been pre preparing for John Wick Four. Maybe. I mean, or? just doing this. Yeah. Just moving. Just, I mean, he's physically doing yeah. some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Didn't move, just didn't like kind of didn't didn't look at anything. Uh, Assad, yeah. uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad, not the uh, um, I think the first one, not yeah. not the current president, yeah, but his, his father, dad. yeah, uh, was famous for um, taking meetings, and he would sit there and not drink a glass of water and not move. He wouldn't even move his legs. It was a thing he would do where he would just he just sit completely still and take and just talk and nothing moved. He was just still. Oh. It was this act of discipline. And it was he was legendary for it. It's like he didn't even twitch his leg and he could sit there for three hours and not fucking move. Oh, Try I that could, sometime. I could never I mean you can see me now. Like yeah, I dude, I'm a like, fidget. But, I'm a I'm a fidgety little thing. My guys don't usually don't let me in a chair that swivels because uh, I'm just uh, like I'm such a I, I get cold <laughs> easily. I'm like, ooh, is there a draft in here? I'm always twitchy and movie. Oh, yeah, I'm not. I, I'd like to be the, the crouching tiger, hidden dragon. The star of that. That yeah. guy was the same way. I can't remember what's his. He was in all the John Woo movies. Great actor. Yeah, didn't move a fucking muscle. I only saw it once. It was good. Good movie. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I figured as a kung fu expert, you. Now, what are you doing? Look, even shape? right now, look what I'm doing. I've got know, a little. Look at this. Well, because the world scares us. Yeah. I go from angry to anxious, and yeah. then have, then between that is depression. Well, it's funny. My general disposition is like. Even though, as I said, I'm like kind of world weary. I'm just like, the world is just a shitty place and you got to like yeah. kind of figure out something. My general disposition is pretty good. And it's yeah. pretty like, I try not to be too crazy and too angry. And even the way I do my show, 
my shows, I'm sure it's the same for you. Like I'm happiest when the hour has gone by and I was like, that was a funny show today. I don't yeah. care about how much information I got out necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if the show was funny, yeah. then I'm like, I did what I'm supposed to do right. because you can watch any, like, okay, maybe I'm somewhat insightful on the news. You go watch a whole bunch of people that you can get some insight from, right. right? Or that can analyze news. But if I can do it in a funny way, to me, that's, that is what my skill is. Right. But to what extent do you think is your philosophy? To what extent do you think your philosophy is a function of uh, how you grew up versus the things you've been exposed to? That's good. Um, I would say if I was answering this probably eight years ago, I would say it was mostly how I grew up in when I was more lefty, let's say, and the world could function with a decent, mm -hmm. I was never like bananas crazy. Modern. Even when I was on the Young Turks, yeah. I was definitely more moderate. You can watch I and mean, people can find it during one of the Gaza Israel flare ups back then. I was debating five of them about Israel and they had no idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. No idea. So I was never like completely off the reservation in that sense. But I would say in terms of the, the people that have influenced me, I mean, in the last couple of years, you know, you spend as much time as I've spent around Jordan Peterson. Yeah, he's, I mean, he, he quite literally convinced me to have children, you know what I mean? So like yeah. if you've spent enough time around really good, thoughtful, interesting, Jordan, I would say is a basically a modern prophet. I if you, if you spend enough time around those types of people and they haven't been able to affect you on the margins, yeah. you know, sit with Dennis Prager and listen to him explain how the stories of the Old Testament which you were referencing earlier, like how those things can still matter today yeah. or any of those things, like then what's the, what, what would be the point of interviewing somebody or anything else? So yeah. I, I've shifted more as I got older because, well, I've tried to go to where the truth is, I suppose. And yeah. And that's a really good point. I think sometimes when, when you have mentors, people who are older, one of the beautiful things about just the fact that YouTube exists where you can hear these people talk is Sometimes people like that seem to be able to articulate things you feel yeah. but can't express, or they create the architecture, the the psychic and intellectual architecture for you to navigate your way through the chaos. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much that you're born with. You're born with beliefs. It's not even born with. I think you come oh, through I the think world. You're, I, think, you, I think you, you definitely are. are definitely born with certain traits and yeah. things, but you also come through your life and, and you are at the mercy of forces greater than yourself. And so you're going to be given beliefs about yourself yeah. and about the world that are not true um, and that certainly don't serve you. And then what happens is if you keep searching and, you, and if you're lucky enough to talk to these people or be around them, you get a you get a Jordan Peterson or yeah. a Dennis Prager or whoever it might be, and for me, if the first one was probably Joseph Campbell. Mm. Guys, if you like this episode, all you got to do is click this link somewhere over here, and uh, it'll take you over to um, uh, Mug Club, where you can watch the rest of the episode. You can also watch a bunch of other uh, content, namely Louder with Crowder, Stephen Crowder. <laughs> 